Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to model a bike rim in Autodesk Fusion 360. The first thing we want to do is come over here to the left side and click on the arrow next to Origin. You'll see that there are three planes we can choose from. Let's click on YZ, which is a plane we want to use, which corresponds to the right side of our view cube. Now if I click on right, we're going to look normal to this plane. So let's start a sketch on this plane, come up and hit Create Sketch. And from here, we're going to click on Create, and we're going to come down to Rectangle, and we're going to select Center Rectangle. We're going to place the center of our rectangle here on the origin, and we're going to drag this out until we have a 23 millimeter by 38 millimeter rectangle. And so these are the approximate dimensions and in inches. And you can always double click on this and type in the value. You can do that for any of these dimensions. I'm going to type in 23 millimeters and hit enter. And from here, uh, we want to make a couple changes to this rectangle before we continue. So let's click on all of our lines. And with all four of them selected, let's come here to the right side. And under where it says Sketch Palette, let's click on Construction. All of a sudden, these lines have been turned into construction lines. Now that's great because when we create our um, our revolve, we don't want these lines to be part of that profile. So from here, we can begin building our shape, which is going to be the cross section of what we're going to use. So let's come over here and select line. And we're going to create a line that starts here and comes across. And we're going to come down to about here. Uh, before we begin dimensioning. And if you click on the end point of that line you just made and you drag out, it should automatically give you um, an arc. Now that didn't really work for us, so let's try that again. I'm going to create another line from this point, drag down, and I'm just going to come over here and click on create and under create I can come down to arc three point arc that's the kind of arc we want to use so let's click on this point and we're gonna drag it to around here just for now and because of my placement this is automatically tangent now if you don't see the symbol come up then it means that you need to click on this line and you need and you need to hold down shift and click on this arc and come over here to where it says tangent and click on tangent. That's going to make those, that's going to set that constraint between the arc and the line. So from here, I'm going to create uh, one more arc. So three point arc, click on this first point, and I'm just going to drag it to about here for now. And I'm going to show you how to do what we did before. So I'm going to click on this arc, click on this arc and come over here to where it says tangent, make them tangent to each other. And from here, I'm going to place this arc um, about here for now. Now if I click on this point at the end of my second arc and I click on the origin, I can come over here under constraints and click on horizontal slash vertical. That's going to make it vertical with this center point. That's what we want. So. That being said, I want to come over and create another line, click on this point, drag it out to be horizontal, and let's make this arc and this line tangent. Now they're tangent to each other. So let's set a dimension here on this line. I'm going to come out, bring a sketch dimension. Now we don't want the whole thing, we just want this line. And let's set a dimension for 
for now we can always change that value if we need to and from here um, I want to take this line and I want it to be set right on this construction line so with these two selected you have to hold down shift to select both of them we can come over and select the collinear constraint under our constraints tab and now they're collinear so I'm just gonna drag this up to where it seems fit about here seems fine and from here uh, with this created we need to create a couple more lines um, before we can mirror our sketch to the other side so I'm going to create a line that comes down from this one so we're gonna drag this one out uh, to about here um, I'm gonna take a line drag it down I'm gonna drag it down about um, let's say 60,000 so I could type in 60 thousandths of an inch and you can always work with whatever units you want as long as you make sure that you type in IN or MM after your dimension that's very important so that the system knows what unit you're talking about so let's bring out another line and this is gonna come down from here and we want to make this the same all around so let me go to sketch dimension and set a dimension between here and here oh, we already have that of course um, we really want to set a dimension from this line to this line and I can just click on this first dimension D4 you see where it says D4 right there uh, that's dimension 4 so I can type in D4 and that's going to automatically link this dimension to this one very convenient I'm going to do the same thing on this and I'm going to click on this first one hit OK and there we go that's the thickness material that we want to use now as you can see this um, long line is a certain dimension and we want this point and this point to line up with each other so with them both selected I can come over and click on horizontal slash vertical and that's automatically going to set them to be in line with each other uh, the software is smart enough to know that you want it to be horizontal you can see the constraint right here so that's great now what we want to do from here is we want to uh, make these two lines uh, bring them out as well the, the way we did with this one so um, I'm going to show you a little trick here that we can use um, to make it a little bit easier for ourselves so I'm gonna click on this line and I'm also gonna select this line here and I'm gonna select the third line as well and if I come over here to offset you can click O on the keyboard or you can click on offset I can offset that sketch and this little value uh, button right here I can type in 60 thousandths or I can type in D4 and if I type in D4 you're gonna see that it links it links that dimension the same way and now we have our thickness so we, we want to make sure that this is construction just gonna make this a construction line same thing with this one this needs to be construction so um, that's great and um, what we want to do from here is we want to be sure that this is um, a closed profile so I'm just gonna connect these and yes it's a closed profile so I'm just gonna control Z go back uh, what we want to do from here now that we have our profile completed is just come up here and hit save you wanna just make sure that you're saving your work all the time and now we're gonna mirror all and we're going to add another closed profile to our shape here before we continue so let's zoom in a little bit here on this section of our sketch and let's come up here to line click on line and let's drag out a line that comes from this point out and we're gonna make it about 0.1 inches in length and we're going to come over here to create and we're going to look for the arc click on three-point arc 
click on this point and let's drag out to about here and so what we want to do is click on line click on this point drag out um, click on this line and make it horizontal if it's not already um, then click on these two and as long as they're tangent um, you should be good to go now uh, here's something that that we need to do with our sketch uh, before we can mirror it we need to come up here click on line click on the origin and just drag up a line and then click on that line and come over here to the right side and click on construction now this is a construction line that we can use to mirror from so let's finish this profile that we're working on let's click on this point click on this line and let's make it coincident and we now have a an arc that's coincident so what we want to do from here is decide um, how low we want this to be so I'm gonna bring it down to about here and I'm gonna make this line construction and let's bring in another three-point arc under arc click on this point and let's drag out um, I want this to be horizontal so we're gonna we're gonna drag this out we're gonna click on these two arcs and they're going to be tangent with each other and we'll finish that with a line that comes to here and we're really just seeing how this profile is going to take shape now in real life we're not going to use these two lines um, we're just looking at what the whole profile is really going to look like so that being said um, this looks pretty good to me in terms of dimensions I'm going to delete these two arcs and I'm going to finish the sketch by offsetting coming here to offset just like we did before and clicking on these two lines um, which is not going to let us do because uh, they're connected but if you select them both first and then click on offset it'll let you do that and you can type in d4 which is the dimension that we used before and if you click on flip here in this little button you can flip it upward and we're just going to hit OK and let's finish this off by connecting or actually let, let's leave them open before we do our uh, mirroring so we're about ready to do our mirroring and we're gonna see what that looks like so let's come over here to create come down to mirror select the mirror button and we're going to select all the arcs that we wanna mirror and we're going to select some of these horizontal lines as well as these arcs and the rest of the sketch so click on all these lines uh, but be sure not to select the um, rectangle so I'm going to select this line and I'm going to click on mirror line here and I'm going to select this line that runs that runs through the origin in this direction and when I click on it you're going to see that my sketch has been mirrored to the other side so I'm going to hit OK and if done correctly this is going to be a closed profile that we can use now with our profile created we want to create the axis of rotation for our revolve so what we're going to do from here is we're going to zoom out and I'm going to come over here and place a line that's horizontal don't worry about the dimension of this line for now but let's make it construction so I'm going to click on construction here on the right and we're going to come up here and click on sketch dimension and we're going to set a dimension here from the bottom of this so if I click on this bottom dotted line and I click on this line we're going to make this dimension 557 millimeters 
and you're going to see that that line is the thing that drops down. The reason being that our sketch up here is fully defined or almost fully defined. And so all these lines being black and the, and the rectangle being a black dotted line, it's fully dimensioned right on the origin. And so it's not going to move when I set a, another dimension uh, because it's, it's nearly fully constrained. So with this uh, being made now, we can click on finish sketch. And what we want to do from here is come over here to Revolve. That's going to come up. And we want to be careful about what we select for profile. So we want to click on this profile. And we also want to click on this profile. You can see that there are two selected. And for Axis, I'm going to click on that. And if I zoom out, I can look for the Axis that we created, which is right here. So I'm going to click on it and you're going to see that our rim has been created. So I'm going to rotate this a little bit. You can kind of zoom in and, and look at it and, and look at the profile and see what it looks like. So I'm going to hit OK. And if I come down here, I can select Orbit and click on Free Orbit and I can orbit around my part and look at it from different angles and look at their proportions and all those sorts of things. Um, so this is around the uh, shape of what we want. So you can see uh, this is the area where we would be placing our tire. We would now like to create the holes for our spokes and spoke nipples. So let's start by coming over here to YZ. And once we select YZ, which is a plane we want to create our sketch on, let's come over here to Tools. And let's select Section Analysis. We can now look at our part as a section. So let's hit OK. And we're now looking at um, a section of our part. So if I rotate this, you can see that we're looking through, um, right through uh, a cross section of the part. And what we can do from here is create a sketch on the YZ plane. So come back to solid and select create sketch. And we're going to go to create and we're going to come down to where it says rectangle and let's create a center rectangle and we'll, we'll just place it about here for now and what we want to do is select on the center of that rectangle and the origin and let's make them vertical with each other so now they're constrained in that way and I can just drag this down And I can set a dimension here between these two lines. <clears throat> and I'd like this to be 0.16 inches. Let's see what that looks like. And you can see that uh, we've created this um, sort of rectangle that we want to use for our revolved cut. But there's one thing that we need to remember to do we need to come back to line, click on line, and create a line from the origin down to uh, this line right here. And once you do that, you can come and click on trim and trim away some of these lines that you don't need anymore. You can get rid of um, all these things. And you're going to get a, this warning. It's going to say that uh, some of the constraints that you created were deleted. That's okay. We just want to be sure that within our sketch, uh, we have the constraints that we need. So as you can see, that, that vertical constraint was deleted. That's totally fine. You can just uh, click on the line and create it again, and you'll see that it comes back. So let's set a dimension. Well, let's first take this... Uh, this point here and place it on the origin. You want to click on it, place on the origin. 
and let's set our dimension again except when we make the dimension between this line and this line is going to be 0 0.08 because that's 0 0.16 divided by 2 and if you'd like you can type in 0 0.16 divided by 2 and it'll automatically do that those that math work for you so times 0 0.1 just want this dimension okay and from here we want to add uh, one more cut dimension um, right here is where our our uh, spoke nipple is going to go but in order to uh, place it in we're going to need to create another hole here at the top that's large enough for us to place it so let's uh, create uh, another set of lines I'm gonna drag this up and bring this out and let's set another dimension here and we're going to make this one um, 0.28 divided by 2 and so that's going to be about large enough for us and so we're going to leave this the way it is it's not fully const constrained but that's fine we're just going to leave it like this for now and we're going to hit finish sketch and let's come over here to uh, revolve so if I click on revolve I can select this profile and this profile and the axis is going to be right here and this is the axis that we're going to use for our cut and be sure that under operation it says cut right here it comes up automatically but make sure that it, that it says cut and just hit OK and now we have our hole which is running through our part here so I can come down to free orbit and rotate and you're gonna see that that's the reality that we see here what we'd like to do next is create a circular pattern of the hole that we just created so let's come up to construct that's this button right here and if you click on this little arrow you can come down and come down to axis through cylinder slash cone slash torus click on it and now let's zoom in on our part and we're going to select this cylinder right here now this is part of our original uh, profile so if we click on it we're going to see that this window pops up and it says face one selected so we're gonna hit OK and if you look very closely here you can see under construction on the left side axis has come up and you can actually see the axis right here in blue I know it's a little hard to see but it's there and you can drag it out if you'd like to make it a little easier to see so that's great that's exactly what we want and now let's look at this from the front and we're gonna come up to create and we're going to select pattern and circular pattern and let's find our hole that we created so I'm gonna under pattern type it's asking what we want to pattern we don't want to pattern a face we want to pattern a feature because that's what we made we made um, a hole a revolved cut that's a feature so let's click on features and let's zoom in on our on our feature we made and let's click on it and now it's selected and let's click under axis and click on select and we're going to select the axis that we created so I can select it here under construction or I can come into the preview window and click on it so let's click on that and if we look at this from the side now we can see there's a preview for a couple of the holes now if I up this quantity you're going to see that there are more and more of these coming up and that's because um, the larger the number obviously the, the more times it's patterned we want to pattern this 24 times so I'm going to up this quantity until it says 24 and we're going to leave it at that so I'm gonna hit OK 
And now, if we look at this part from the side, we can see that all the holes have been created. And that's what we want. We're going to use these holes to attach our spokes and spoke nipples. Our spokes and spoke nipples need to connect to the hub or axle of the wheel. So let's create that first and we will use that so that we know where our spokes need to connect to. So if we look at the part from the side, we can come over here and select the appropriate plane to use to create our revolve. So this is going to be the YZ plane. Now I'm going to start a sketch on this plane. And with the sketch created, I can click on the axis that we made before. And this is going to serve as the starting point for our axle. So let's drag out a line. And it's going to come from the middle of our part. And we're going to drag this out. And we're going to do the same thing for the other side. I'm going to drag that out to about here. And we can find the origin and click on the origin right here where you can see where it is right here. And if we select the origin and we select this point here, we can make them vertical with each other. And as long as they're vertical, uh, we know that the center of our soon to be new part is in the middle. Uh, that's going to be very important for us. So let's create a dimension here from this point out to here. And we want this to be about 2.826 inches divided by 2. And we want to do the same thing for the other side. So let's set a dimension from here to this point. Drag it up and click on this dimension to set them equal to each other. And let's create a dimension for the angle. Let me drag this up. Let's create a dimension for the angle. I can actually create a line that goes from the center point right there up to the origin. And once I do that, I can click on it and make it construction. And now I could set a dimension here between this line and this angle. And if this, if this is a little bit hard to see, we can always finish the sketch and then go to tools and click on section analysis. And if we click on the plane, then we can just split our whole part in half. It's going to make it a little bit easier to see what we're doing here. So let me go to this sketch. And now we're back in that sketch that we were working on, except it's a little bit easier to see this time because I see what I'm doing now. So uh, that being said, uh, we want this to be, let's say, about 88. See what that looks like. And let's do that same thing on the other side. Set a dimension between them, between this line and this line here. And we want it to be the angle. And I'm going to select uh, this dimension here. And um, with those dimensions being set, let's add in um, the flat at the end. So I'm going to come to line and I'm going to just drag a line downward and I'm going to click on the point, click on the line and I'm going to make them coincident with each other. I'm going to do the same thing uh, with this one here. So click on the line, click on the point, make them coincident. And let's just bring, let's make this point and this point um, let's set them to be horizontal with each other. Go like this point and this point here. Now they're horizontal. Uh, same thing with these 
two bottom ones, so click on this point and this point. Now they're horizontal with each other. So if I move one, the other should move. Same thing with the top point. Top point should move uh, just as well. And with that, um, let's let's create a line where our axis is. So let's drag a line across and we're going to click on that point and click on this line and we're going to make these coincident and I want this axis and this line to be collinear so I want that I want one to be on top of the other and so the way to do that is we're going to come over here to create click on create come down to project and let's select include 3d geometry and if I click on this button I can select this 3d geometry and it's going to copy it so now with this line copied I can select this line and select this line and I'm, I can make them collinear and that's what we want so as we, we can see, um, we're almost there here. Um, we just want to add uh, a couple more things. And if you select this line and the axis line, you can come over here to, and click on this triangle and, and it'll make it a midpoint. Sorry. Sorry, you want to click on this point and the line and then it'll create it midpoint. So uh, that's great. That's really going to help us. Um, now we're almost done here we just need to close our sketch so I'm gonna drag this line until it comes to this point and as you can see we now have a closed profile but we're not done just yet we need to create the disk at the end of the uh, part here so let's drag out the line again and we'll select this point we'll come out and we'll come down to about here make sure this line is vertical or I can't make it vertical so let me try that again take the line drag it down I can actually come down past the line if I want to click on trim and just trim that away and that's gonna do about the same thing for us so let's set a dimension here for the thickness this is important and let's make this uh, 60 thousandths I can type in D4 and that's going to use that constraint that we used before so that's D4 for the thickness and let's set up the same thing for the other side come up here drag a line out drag down and let's cut this and let's set a dimension here and same thing as before okay so we now have our profile for our but let's add one more dimension first for the height so the height is accurate so what we want to do is let's just drag up our rim here and now we can drag up the rest of the part and let's set a dimension between the or the axis here so between the axis and this point and between the point and the axis sorry okay there it is um, let's make this point 85 and you're gonna see that that definitely thickens up our um, part and let's set another dimension between the top of our piece here and the axis again and let's set this dimension to be 1.25 inches let's hit OK and we're going to beef up this rim here by double clicking on a dimension and typing in 0.125 and with this now newly changed we can double click on our other dimension here and click on our first one and that's going to set them to be equal to each other which is going to be very helpful so now with this profile created let's finish our sketch 
and we want to right click on sketch 4 under the sketches right click and click on show or hide now we have our sketch visible so let's come up to revolve and let's select this profile this profile and the other two and click on axis and select this axis in order to create the revolve now we want to create a new component not even a new body if I make a new body then what that's going to do is create a new body in this part but what we want to do is actually create a new component so what we're doing is creating uh, two parts that are going to be in an assembly so we're going to hit OK and we can see that the hub of our wheel has been created let's zoom in on our wheel hub here and if we click on this face and we create a sketch let's create a hole here near the top so I'm going to drag out a circle from right here and I'm going to set a dimension on the circle to be 80 thousandths of an inch in diameter and we're going to actually bump that up or we'll, let's keep it at 80 thousandths and I can set a dimension from the center of the circle to the origin and I'm going to make it 1.135 and with this having been created uh, the next thing I want to do is cut so I'm going to finish the sketch and I'm going to click on extrude and if I select a circle and I rotate this I can click on this arrow and drag it through the part and under operation you want to have cut selected which it is so I'm going to hit OK and after I create that cut what I want to do is create a pattern so go to create and head to pattern click on circular pattern and let's click on this circle for our our object and make sure that features is selected that's very important because we're we're uh, creating a circular pattern of a feature and under axis click on select and let's click on the axis right here the one that we used to create this revolve in the beginning and we're going to make this the same amount that we used on our bike rim so if I hit OK and I right click on this feature which is the first uh, circular pattern we did I can see that we had 24 for the quantity and if I hover over the window it says D19 so that's the parameter that we're going to use for this quantity so let me double click to on this feature to come back to the feature and I'm gonna type in D19 and that's going to automatically link that original um, property to this one so that being said we have our revolution and this is what we're going to use to create our spokes so from here what we want to do is create a sketch brand new sketch and we're going to make this on the XY plane so I'm gonna create a sketch and I'm going to bring out a line from the origin which may be a little bit tricky to find but you want to click on that center circle and you want to drag out until you come here and if the line is not connected to anything then you know that there's an issue so let's let's be sure to click on this point and let's click on this point here let's make them coincident 
and now you can see that it's right in the middle. So this is going to be our first line and we're going to use this line to dimension off of. So, so let's create a second line. Come up here to line, click on the same origin, and let's drag out uh, past our rim and let's set a dimension between them to be 360 degrees divided by D19. Now if you remember, D19 is the dimension that we use to create our initial uh, revolve. And that amount is going to be divided uh, into, the, into 360. So when I hit OK, that's going to come out to be 15 degrees and we're using the exact uh, numerical value that we use for our whole pattern. So as you can see, it, this line goes perfectly through it. And so from here, let's drag this point back to where we want it to land. Now we want it to land um, a little bit inside here. Actually, we, we want to have it about here and we can always lengthen it if we need to, but we're going to keep it there for right now. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to finish the sketch. And what I want you to do now is come to uh, Solid. And I want you to um, click on here on the View Cube, so this top section right here, so we can look now at an angle to our part and geometry. So click on construct and let's come down to axis through cylinder. So let's click on that same thing again and let's click on the cylinder and that's automatically going to place an axis for us. So let's hit OK. What we want to do from here is create a plane. So if you click on this component Component 2 here in the window, you can right click on it and hit show slash hide. Now with that part hidden, we can see this little axis right here. We're going to use this in order to create our next plane. So under construct, click on the little construct tab right here and select plane at angle. Click on that and let's select this plane. And if we type in 360 divided by D19, which is the same dimension that we used before, we're going to see that our plane is uh, pitched at an angle now. So let's put a negative in front of that, and you're going to see that it flips it in the other direction. So negative 360 divided by D19. Hit OK. And we're going to use this plane um, right now for the creation of our spoke. So from here, let's come back to component and click show slash hide. And let's click on this plane. Let's click on create sketch. And we're going to create a sketch here. Now, if it's hard to tell where the inside of this is, and I'm, I'm sure it is hard to tell because there's no indication of it, we can come up to Tools and click on Section Analysis. And for Section Analysis, you can come to the Construction tab right here and click on Plane 1, which is the one that we created. And that's going to cut the part right in half. Hit OK. And it's just going to make it a little bit easier to work with. So from here, I'm going to create a line and I'm going to um, just kind of come through here, uh, come through this section, and uh, once I get to here, it's going to bring it here to the inside. And I'm going to place it at about this point. And if you look closely, you can see um, this is very similar to on a real bike. Now, on a real bike, this uh, line or, or this 
uh, spoke is actually under tension when it's um, face to face with the flat right here. Now we're not going to model that exactly. We're really just doing it as a, a visual thing. So we're we're going to leave it like this for now, and we're going to finish the sketch. And from here, uh, what we want to do is we want to right click and edit our sketch because we want to add a couple things here, like a fillet. So if you click on this point, you click on this point, you can add a fillet to the sketch itself and that's going to make it a lot more realistic. That's going to make our hook a little bit more realistic. So um, we're going to just hit OK, right click, OK, and we're going to finish our sketch. And from here, let's create a plane. So we're going to create a, a plane right on this point. So we're going to come up here to construct and we're going to click on plane along path, which is the last option here for the plane. And we're going to click on this path and that's automatically going to create a plane for us. So we're going to hit OK. And with this plane created, we're going to create a sketch on it and we're going to zoom in and right on the origin that it's giving us we're going to make a circle that's going to be 0.08 in diameter and we're going to finish the sketch and if I rotate this then I can see the sizing here and as we can see, we may need to make a couple edits to our original sketch. I could drag this out a little bit. Um, but I want this point, the center of the circle and this line uh, to be on top of each other. So um, if I drag this line out, um, then I definitely want to move this sketch with it. We can right click, edit the sketch, and we can move this accordingly. So I, I can take this and, and, and delete this constraint and then just drag it until it connects. And free orbit is gonna help us a lot. We could see exactly uh, where we are. So I'm gonna take this and, and uh, if I need to, I can click on this point right here and I can click on the center of this and make them coincident. And I'm gonna finish the sketch and we're going to make an edit here to this line. We're going to drag it out a little bit so that there's enough room. And we're going to try our sweep right now. So I'm going to come to create and I'm going to click on sweep. And this is going to be our profile and the path is automatically going to be selected for us. Now we're not doing a cut. We're actually going to do just a um, new body or new component actually. So we want to create a new component because this is going to really be um, a whole new part for us. And we're going to hit OK. And if we look at this from the front now, we can rotate to the front. And if we'd like, we can right click on section and hit delete. And that's going to delete that section for us. And from here, um, really all we need to do is uh, just create a circular pattern. So let's come down to our circular pattern and let's click on our uh, component. This is a component now, so we're going to click on it. And for the axis, we're going to use the same axis uh, that we've been using. We're just going to select that axis. And again, we want to use the same parameter that we did before. So I'm going to type in D19. And you're going to see that that fills in all of these um, with the exact uh, number that we need. So that, that's uh, what we want. And you can, if you look at it from the side, you can see that it's actually popping out the way that, that we want it to. That's because of the... Uh, lines that we created in our sketch and as you can see all of these are on one side now we want to flip them to the other side uh, to be used there 
And so to do that, we're going to mirror um, this entire pattern. So I'm going to click on mirror and I'm going to uh, come down and select uh, this part. We're really going to have to select um, all of them, all of our objects. Now, uh, the way to do that is you can come down here to where our features are and you can select um, components and you can select this pattern. And if you click on the uh, components, you're going to see that everything is revolved now. The, the pattern is now revolved. And the uh, plane that we want to use is we want to select uh, this plane right here, which is the XY plane. And with that selected, when we hit OK, you're going to see that it mirrors it to the other side. The last thing we need to do is change the angle of the spokes. Now before we had them parallel with our line right here that we first created, but it turns out that these need to be placed of course perfectly in the holes. So if you right click here on plane one, which is the plane that we created, go to edit feature and delete everything inside this box and just make it negative 18 degrees. Then hit OK and you'll see that the spokes now fit into the holes which is uh, exactly the way that we um, want it to be. For fun, let's create a tire for this bike. What we can do to make this easier for ourselves is to uh, come to the YZ plane and we're going to create a sketch. And from here, let's come to Tools and click on Section Analysis. Click on this face and that's going to cut our part in two for us. And from here, all we have to do is work around the original sketches that we created. So um, I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to uh, create a line that comes up and fits inside um, this, this sort of rim here. And it's going to come up and it's going to come out and I'm going to create an arc here. Um, not one that's tangent. I'm going to delete that and I'm going to move this dimension up and I'm going to create a three-point arc starting on this point and coming out and that's going to come up to um, about here and I'm going to place the center of the arc on in line with the origin. So if you click on uh, the origin point and this point, you can make them vertical with each other. And uh, this line needs to be horizontal. And this is mostly an approximation about of, of where of what it's going to look like. So um, once I create a profile that I, I feel is suitable, uh, what I'm going to do is mirror this sketch. Now a couple more lines I need to create here. Um, to close it, I'm going to um, take a line from here and bring it to the inside here. And at this point, uh, what I want to do is add some fillets. So come up here to fillet, and this is a sketch fillet. So just click on these points here and that's going to automatically fill it for you, the sketch. Right click, hit OK. And if you need to, you can drag these out a little bit to make sure that they fit over that little rim there. And um, from here, um, we want to make this as accurate as possible. So I'm going to drag out a line and bring it to here and then uh, try to fill in um, the way that the tire would actually be placed. So I'm going to come here, uh, drag down if necessary, and create my arc, three-point arc, from this point down to about here. 
And I'm going to connect everything now um, with a line that comes from this point to this point. And uh, with this being created, I could see that this is a closed profile, and that's great. Uh, what I want to do from here is I want to mirror this. So I'm going to click on Mirror, and I'm going to select all the objects that I want to mirror to the other side. So I'm going to click on all these lines, and I want to make sure that everything is selected, even the little lines that um, may be hard to see. And I could actually see here we have, uh, we have something that's that's broken here so I, I need to move this a little bit and kind of work with the lines uh, to be sure that there aren't any breaks uh, like the one right here so we want to just reconnect uh, these points and we can set these to be uh, tangent with each other and now we're back in business let me delete this stray line and let's try that again. I'm going to come here and click on mirror and I'm going to select uh, those lines again. So I'm going to select all these lines and with these selected I can uh, mirror them along this line. So I'm going to click on mirror line, I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to hit OK. And now I have my profile that I can use for the tire. So hit finish sketch. And what I want to do from here is come to solid and create. Under create I want to go to revolve. And these two are going to be my profile. And if I zoom out far enough, I can come down to axis and select the axis here. And this is going to be a new body, or actually a new component. And I'm going to hit OK. And you're going to see that it creates that profile for us. So let's go back to tools, turn off our section analysis. Or actually, right here, section analysis, just delete it out of the analysis tab. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it. If I click on the feature that I made right here, um, then I can change the color of it. I can come up to component color, and I can change the color of the parts. You can see that it, it gave it a sort of purplish color. And that's going to make it a little bit easier to distinguish uh, one part from another. And uh, that's our wheel.